problems that if I drag this down, I get very large numbers. On the second cell here, on D7, I don't get anything. But on the other ones, you'll notice in a moment that you'll get very large values. And by the way, anytime you see these number signs here, that means that column, it's not wide enough. So what you have to do is go to here to the top and move it to the right. Or another trick here is to double click between the columns and it will make it exactly at the widest point. Now your question would be, well, why do I have on this on travel, I had only $2,000 budget, but now somehow the difference is $10 million. The reason for that is because, notice what's being calculated. It's calculating C, so C11 right here, times C9. Because what's happening is, as it's moving down, when we did the autofill, as the autofill was moving down, it shifted one down automatically. So if we go here, it was C7 and C5. So 100 times 0 is 0. The next one, it got 8,000 times 4,000 is 32 million, and so on. So what we need to figure out here is we need to use what's called an absolute reference. So we delete all this stuff. And by the way, this is one of the difficult concepts to explain, but this is uh, important and we need to know it. So on the absolute reference here, what we do is that we go and change the C4. Remember we said that if you see the C4, that's a relative reference. If you see it with the dollar signs, that's an absolute reference. There's also a third type of reference. So you have the relative, and the relative references would be, for example, C4. Absolute, that would be dollar sign C, dollar sign 4. And then you also have what's called mixed references. And uh, mixed references, when one piece either the column or the row is the one that is locked. So it could be, for example, C dollar sign 4 or dollar sign C 4. So either one of those. So in our case here, we're going to go back here. We want to, because we have one point of reference, so we want to lock this. So that means it will have both dollar signs in the reference. So we do C6, which is this guy, times 5%. Now, you can either type the dollar signs manually there, or you can press F4 in Excel, and it will put the dollar signs automatically for you. If you push F4 again, it will change it to a mixed reference that I just explained a moment ago, or the other variation here of the mixed reference. And then you tap it again one more time, it will take you to the relative reference. What we want in our case is the absolute reference. Hit enter. Now drag it down and notice that our calculations are correct. Now you'd say, why would I go, want to go through all of this trouble? The reason for that is because the economy is doing worse. And what you do is, it's say the boss comes along and says, there's going to be a decrease of 7%. You simply type 7 right there everything gets updated automatically. Let's say that uh, you're planning on something and or giving a raise to your employees or a percentage. It's going to be instead of 7%, it's going to be 9% or whatever it may be. You just change one value in one place and then all references to that value get updated automatically. So it's a very important concept. It's very important to use. You'll find uses for it in business. And it's very important to remember how to do this. Now, before we actually leave here in a moment, let's explain a little bit the, the mixed references. On the mixed references, well, you'd use those if you have a bunch of those values or key values that you would modify. And those could be either in a row or in a column. Now, if you want to lock them down by that specific row, what you do is you'd simply lock down the row portion of it. So it'll be this first one, the C dollar sign four. So you're locking in that specific row. If you wanted to lock the column, depending on what where the column is, then or what the values in that column are, then you'd lock it would be the second instance here. So the dollar sign C and then four, because you're you're allowing 
the rows to change, but not the columns. So let's try it here. So let's change this to a mixed wrapper. We press F4. So now we are locking it by the row, just four. So if we, when we scroll down, the values should not change. And we'll notice here that it will work. It will be, basically stay the same because we have one value. If I hit enter, notice it's 360. If I do the auto fill, it should work. So it stays the same. If I went and changed the formula the other way around, so what that does is that we locked it by the row. Now, if I go this way, however, notice I'll get a no value. The reason for that is because it's calculating here D6, this value, by the next one. Because we did not lock the column, we locked just the row here. So if we wanted that, so let's say we had 5% here. Then notice it's taking D6, this one, and it's moving one to the right. So it's doing 360 times 5 and giving us a high value. So we, that's not what we want. So now let's go ahead and change this first reference here to a mixed reference, but having the dollar sign in front of C. So we do F4 and then hit enter. So if I go to the right, it moved to the right. However, if I go down here, again, it's not going to work because, again, we are not locking the rows. It's changing on the rows, so it's just moving one down because the, the rows didn't get locked down. So most likely you'll not use quite as much the mixed references. However, you'll use mostly the absolute references where you're locking to one point and that's it. So the important concept here is to use their relative references that you most commonly use. There are absolute references with both dollar signs where you are locking on a special, you know, particular cell location. Then you're using mixed references where you're locking either the column or the row. Welcome back to Excel. At this point, I'm going to cover a couple of the things as far as formatting of a worksheet before I move into data filtering and sorting and other types of uh, functionality in Excel. So formatting. There are a couple easy ways here. Basically, there are styles that you can use in a spreadsheet. You can format the whole area of a bunch of cells together, or you can format the actual values within a cell. The formatting of the values within a cell, uh, let's say, let me do this first, you want to in increase the decimal points. For example, for financial calculations, you might go up to five decimal points. And that's where you do this, increase the decimal points by using these buttons here under number. And of course, you can do that for a whole bunch of numbers or a whole range. There are different types of formatting that you can apply. You can select the whole range that you want to format, and then you could choose this option here for format as a table, and pick any of them that you prefer, basically. And notice, instead of you spending all afternoon formatting this, this has been formatted automatically for you. So let me go ahead and undo this. And by the way, if you change your mind, you can go and pick something else from here. So just remember, it's very easy. Just go into the styles here and apply a style. There are also cell styles that you can apply. The cell styles is basically selecting a specific cell or a specific range of cells and then applying a particular format to it. Another thing that you can do is you can do what's called conditional formatting. The conditional formatting, it can be based on the values within those cells. So let's say we're going to apply to this we're going to format this as a table. And let's say at this point, we want to take these values within this table or with this range and then represent those values in some kind of conditional type of formatting. So let's say we want to point out all the values that are below average. So you go under conditional formatting. So we have selected the range here. You click on conditional formatting and then you choose for example, the top bottom rules, above average or below average. 
so we want it below average.